With the advancement of technology, bridges not only enhance the city's wealth, but also make transit more convenient. People have been building bridges at an increasing rate. A bridge in China not only transports travelers deep into a realm of fairyland, but it also received the Nobel Prize in the field of bridge design. Most impressively, it only cost $700 million to build the biggest span high-speed railway bridge in the world. Also, it carries the biggest design load of any high-speed railway bridge in the whole globe. Together, let's explore more intriguing endeavors throughout the globe as modern civilization advances. Bridges play a significant role in people's daily lives. It can not only reduce the distance traveled, but also free us from topographical restrictions like rivers, mountains, streams, and deep valleys so we can safely traverse congested highways or trains. It is 20 kilometers upstream from the Nanjing Yangtze River Bridge and is known as the Nanjing Dashing Wooden Bridge. As the Yangtze River Bridge begins in Nanjing City's UART district and finishes in the Puka district, Nanjing Dashing occurs. We are aware that the Yangtze River Bridge project has a total investment of 700 million USD based on publicly available information. The bridge has a total length of 9273 meters and its deck is configured as a six-track railway with a design peak speed of 300 km per hour. The world's fastest trains cross this railroad bridge. The bearing capacity of the supports on the piers is as much as 17,000 tons, and the design load of the bridge is six lines of rail transit. At the highest design load as of 2006, it is now the biggest high-speed railway bridge in the world. Construction on the Nanjing Swift Wooden Yanks River Bridge began and it was finished and fully operational in under three years. The Nanjing Daring Wooden Yanks River Bridge was formally opened to traffic in June of that same year, while the two lines of the Shanghai and Rome Express Passenger Corridor were placed into service in January of that same year. By December 2017, the bridge's high-speed rail connection between Beijing and Shanghai was formally operational. On both sides of the bridge, there are three Nanjing metro lines that are now open for business. As a result, the bridge becomes the first six-track railway bridge in the world, and all of its lines are put to operation. This distinction also denotes the best quality in Chinese bridge building. Yet, there were significant challenges encountered during construction of the bridge. Deep Water Foundation, a double-walled steel hanging box cofferdam, is China's largest main pier. How to produce, float, and travel down the river. The steel cofferdam also has to be placed precisely in deep water, a rapid stream, and a tide range. How to figure out the precision needs and alignment of the main bridge pier top steel girder erected by the big floating crane on the ocean. These problems pose formidable obstacles for any nation. Thus, how will China resolve these issues? Simple Li China has created a ton of amazing infrastructure because it is adept at confronting the challenges faced by other nations. Chinese engineers approved a new type of steel with a key 420 grade, high strength, high toughness, and good welding performance after a period of testing. Based on the bridge's features, the main bridge's steel girder also uses a three-piece main truss load bearing construction and is located north of the Tropic Steel Bridge Deck. Also, China has created a brand new technology that enables floating cranes to fully rotate, as well as high torque drilling rigs, three story sling towers, and 70 ton cranes with variable slope crawler beams. For China, the issue of building bridges has been resolved through the development of new materials, constructions, tools, and methods. So, what part does he play in constructing a bridge that is so difficult? The opening of the bridge will significantly improve the flow of traffic in China's eastern area in terms of transportation. For instance, it may promote growth in the Zhang Bay and Johnson regions of Nanjing. The bridge also resolves Nanjing's transit traffic issue, promotes the business climate in Nanjing and its environs, and strengthens the benefits of Nanjing's strategic location. Urbanization in Nanjing has been substantially aided by its status and significance as a major city in the middle and lower portions of the Yangtze River in China. These qualities can both be used to their maximum potential with this bridge. The bridge also reflects China's urbanization agenda and is crucial to the economic integration of the Yangtze River Delta and the development of the Nanjing Metropolitan Region. The Nanjing Dashing One Yangtze River Bridge was not built with Chinese government funding. The study indicates that funding for this bridge's development 
came at a period when Nanjing urban construction was expanding quickly. As a result, the bridge switches to a new mode of market operation that involves capital growth and share expansion. Once Dutch Shell completed the capital increase in share expansion successfully in 2004, a joint stock company was created in line with the contemporary business framework. The business uses a market-oriented strategy to raise money for bridge building in a number of methods by 27. After the predetermined billing time, a joint stock corporation ran and administered the finished bridge. The Nanjing Municipal Government will receive the management rights from the joint stock corporation. It is thought that the joint stock company repaid the money initially registered and formed by the government after the capital rise in share growth of the bridge. It is abundantly evident that the Nanjing Fast One Nanks River Bridge has made excellent use of the government's total lack of investment in technology advancement. Nanjing was in a hurry even before the construction of the first Yanks River Bridge was completed. Japan is home to 80% of the world's steel tower bridges, yet China does not have a single one of these structures in its infrastructure. The key advantage of the steel tower bridge is the short amount of time it takes to construct it. The bridge is not particularly weighty. The degree of structural safety is relatively high, and the performance during earthquakes is satisfactory. The rapid completion of the wooden Yanks River Bridge in Nanjing not only made up for China's deficiency in experience when it comes to the construction of steel tower bridges, but it also improved the quality of the country's equipment used for the construction of bridges. As of July 2016, the Nanjing Darting Wooden Yanks River Bridge had been used to transport almost 450 million passengers, in addition to roughly 600,000 trains. This would be the equivalent of China moving the entire population of the United States to and from their country once every year. This bridge is certainly not the busiest in the world, despite the fact that it has a very amazing capacity for traffic. The George Washington Bridge in New York City is the bridge that sees the most traffic of any bridge in the whole world. A bridge on suspension that connects Fort Lee, New York City, with Manhattan, northern New Jersey in addition to carrying traffic across the Hudson River, the George Washington Bridge is equipped with 14 lanes in total. As a direct consequence of this, the bridge has become an extremely important route in the city of New York. During the year 2000, the George Washington Bridge has been traversed by nearly 11 million cars, which places it in serious contention for the title of busiest bridge in all of the globe. Since it was built, the George Washington Bridge sees an average of 300,000 vehicles traverse its span every single day. You are known that the total number of cars in the United States is around 250 million. On a yearly basis, the George Washington Bridge is traveled across by approximately one half of the vehicles that are registered in the United States. The revelation of this knowledge is really unsettling. The construction of the two bridges described above was one of the most difficult and difficult and ambitious large-scale bridge projects in the history of bridge construction. They are similar in certain ways, despite the fact that each possesses some characteristics that are unique to it. Each one of them has the capacity to promote the healthy growth of the region, as well as to stimulate the economy in the surrounding area. Share your opinion in comments. Also, click on this video to watch about another shocking project.